Big Sky Outdoors, powered by Town Pump, fueling your next outdoor adventure, is also brought to you by Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild, by Montana Army Navy. Get it, get out, and live it. The Outdoor Report is provided by Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And Bob Wards, everything outdoors, Montana style. I'm a graphic designer by trade, and I've always been looking for a way to kind of combine my two passions, which is design and being outside. After my last job, I took a three-month road trip, and I just drove around the West kind of looking for a, a, a new home, and came through Bozeman and just fell in love with the place. There's a guidebook that I picked up when I first got here and it, and, and it was 55 roadless areas in Montana. And I just thought that was so exciting that there's that much space, there's that much to explore. You can come out here and spend a whole day and, and never see anybody. And it kind of takes you back. I mean, it's almost like stepping back in time. I've always said this about Yellowstone, it's a very subtle place. I'd spent 10 years hiking and backpacking in the park and felt that I had a knowledge that I could give to people and that people you know, could benefit from this. When you have that knowledge, you really want to be able to, to take people to those places so they can have the same experience. The graphic design led to trail guides because it gave me the opportunity to build the site and build it the way I wanted it. Trail Guides is an online resource for hiking and backpacking in Yellowstone National Park. I want to inspire people. I'm not really concerned whether they take a trip with me, but if they're motivated enough to come here and the deciding factor was I looked at this website and it just, it, it drew me in and it, and it made me want to go visit this place. That's, I mean, I think that's, that's enough for me. What I hope people will do is step out of their comfort zone. We like to think that we're in control. And when you're out here, you give that up. And I think that's one of the things that I like about being out here is that you know, you're not the biggest fish. I guess when I come out here, I'm recharged. If you're willing to look, there's always something to see. It doesn't matter whether there's you know, elk or bears or, or, or just simply wildflowers. There's always something to look at. And I think that's what makes every trail special and every trail unique. Find your next adventure at Bob Ward Sports and Outdoors. Bob 
Awards, sports and outdoors, Montana style. My name is Amber Jean, and I live at the end of the road near the top of a mountain just outside of Livingston, Montana. And I've been making a living as an artist in Montana for the last 20 plus years. My work is, is so entwined with my life and lifestyle as, as a Montanan and as a person who embraces and lives and, and explores and, and and adventures in the wilderness. Like, you can't really separate them. I've started to work parts of my world into the pieces themselves, like materials. I use materials that, that surround me. Um, for instance, um, big, big trees. So I harvest those, and I use them in a lot of my big sculptures. I've been working on some small series where I um, use skulls, and I, I just feel like they're a lot there's a similarity between them and the trees because each one has its own little personality and each one has a story. I like them to inform my work and then I bring my story in and then we kind of intertwine them. For me, a lot of creativity has to do with listening. I've become a good craftsperson I can run power tools and I can work with wood or steel or glass or whatever and I know, I, I know how to manipulate the materials. But where I am in my work now has more to do with listening to the material and seeing what it has to say. It's almost like, like a dance or like dance partners, you know, and, and if I bring a tree in, it has its story and it has its moves and then I have mine and then somehow we got to figure out how to make this work. Each piece isn't the same, and I, I don't start a project. I have a general vision, just like I might have an idea of getting to the top of a mountain and wanting to summit a peak, but I don't know what's all in between, and I only know when I've got there, when I've achieved it. So the creative process isn't as magical or as, e as like instantly easy, I don't think. It's pretty messy. Every, absolutely every piece that I consider successful has had its moments of being almost a total pure disaster. And usually when it's, when it's kind of gotten me totally strung out and I, and I, I can't see anymore or I, I'm just pretty certain I've, I've, I've destroyed what I was trying to go and create, that's usually right before everything comes together. critics saying something about my work and how much it was related to this place and I was so afraid to be termed Western because I have this idea about Western but then I realized that my idea of Western has to do with this whole idea of don't fence me in like the people who went out and they push boundaries and they go beyond the fence line and they explore and venture that kind of idea of Western and I realized that my work is so Western. People kept saying way back in school that in order to do it, you have to leave. And I'd left several times, but Montana was, it ended up being too important to me and the energy and spirit of this place is so much me that I just had to stay here.
Since 1953, Town Pump has proudly served our communities as Montana's best convenience store. Town Pump offers a huge selection on all your favorite products, and we're always expanding to meet your needs. This month's specials include... 32-ounce fountain drinks, just $1. Corn dogs are two for $2. And Budweiser, Miller & Coors, 30 packs, just $21.99. Town Pump is here to serve your community, so come visit Montana's best convenience store today. Army Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. Get it. Get out. Get out and live it. figuring out the interactions between species and how it all fits together to build what you see out in the wild. It's why I'm in the field in the first place. There's a lot of work on um, succession of plant communities after fire. So what plants come back in what order. Uh, what there isn't work on is how bee communities come back. Is their habitat damaged by the fire? Does the erosion that results from high severity fires damage them? Um, and so we're looking at the role of high severity versus natural patchy kind of mixed severity fire in how that affects how bees come back. The importance is, I mean, mainly for that biodiversity just maintaining diversity of bee species, plant species, and then also the applied aspect where native pollinators is being sort of understudied out here and for being very important for agriculture and that sort of thing. much to the world. I'm always really interested in what the actual effects are, like what actually happens to the critters, how do they, how do they change after they've been dramatically altered. Doing field work has completely changed how I see things when I'm hiking because it, it, there's parts of it you can't turn off. You'd be like, oh, it's that plant, you know? Yeah, I'm always back in the woods somewhere, uh, getting to see the more, the, the wild side of it. Wolves are a really hot ticket item, or elk, or bighorn, or whatever. And uh, everyone in our lab looks at uh, uh, bees and other pollinators something that for the most part hasn't been done a whole lot in Montana until the last several years. All these wildflowers that you see out like when you're hiking, I mean that's from bees being out there pollinating and then the seeds being dispersed. Um, for another perspective, you know, you, we have all this ag land right out here. Native bees is a big part of just coming down and helping those those farms go. Living in the woods in your backyard, that's the way to get to know a place really.
Counter Assault, the original bear deterrent has been made, developed, and scientifically tested in Montana for nearly 30 years. Counter Assault is what I chose for my staff based on my personal experience, scientific testing, and it's the only one that met all the expert recommendations. Spray time and spray distance are important in a bear attack, and Counter Assault has both. As an avid hiker, hunter, and outdoorsman, Counter Assault is my first line of defense in bear country. Carry what the professionals carry. Counter Assault. Grizzly Tough Bear Spray. Look for the red can. Here's this week's outdoor report by our friends at Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. A new science is allowing fish biologists to look at what is in the water in a whole new way. You can easily take eDNA samples, environmental DNA, and um, pretty easily detect if fish are there or not if you have a specific species you're looking for. Environmental DNA, or eDNA, allows biologists to collect a water sample from a stream and then using DNA markers detect a specific species in that water body. It can be used to map the distribution of species that we don't usually look for, whether it's frogs or invertebrates or any of that kind of stuff. It's going to be really important for early detection of invasive species like zebra mussels or quagga mussels or uh, Eurasian milfoil, those types of things. So there's a whole range of uses. While this science is still in its infancy, researchers hope to fine tune eDNA so in the future you could assess every living thing in and around a stream. Instead of saying, is this species here, asking what species are here and how many. And so being able to look at all the DNA in a sample and assign it back to, yeah, we have this species of caddisfly here and we have bull trout here and we have otters that are visiting this section of stream. And so kind of broadening out that question. EDNA will not replace current fish management practices, but it is an added tool expanding our knowledge of the natural world. I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. What we're doing is a long-term research project on golden eagles. We started testing for lead in 2007. We're able to test the birds for a whole suite of heavy metals. The primary one that we're looking at, though, is lead. There have been numerous studies on eagles, bald eagles, golden eagles, great work on ravens, California condors, waterfowl. More recently, mammalian species that have been found to be contaminated through scavenging of hunter-killed animals that are using lead-based ammunition. These birds have lots of opportunity to, to pick up lead along their migration. Big game hunting is going on. Caribou hunting in Alaska and certain provinces of Canada have almost year-round hunting. As our birds are on the move and so they're picking the lead up while migrating. All the evidence points to that they're getting that lead from hunter-killed ungulates. They're dressed out in the field. The gut or the offal pile is left behind for scavengers to feed on. And golden eagles, even though they're amazing hunters, they're also opportunistic, especially while on migration. In the spring on the Rocky Mountain Front, researchers have found that these eagles will respond to the shooters that are out there shooting ground squirrels. They're looking for the meal as a response to the sound of the rifle shot. And a gut pile, a perfect thing to feed on. Some of them are becoming contaminated with lead due to the fragmented rifle bullet in the offal pile. These birds, we capture them during their peak migration, process them as we say, a series of morphological measurements, blood samples, feather samples, and cut them loose usually in about an hour. Some of these birds we know through satellite telemetry and isotope studies are coming from as far north as northern Alaska, Yukon territories, and then others are mid-latitude and lower latitude of British Columbia. That migration bottlenecks or pinches off at our research site. What we're trying to do is get a representative sample of that entire migratory population. We take a blood sample from the bird and we bring it to Heiko's analytical lab here at the University of Montana, and he runs it through a series of tests. We analyzed lead in blood samples of 178 golden eagles over the last few years. It turned out that 58% of them had above background lead levels in their blood and 10% of them must be considered clinically exposed, and 4% think of as lethally exposed. What we have found is that over roughly 60% of the birds we are sampling have elevated lead levels in their blood. This is a snapshot of that bird's blood lead chemistry at the time of capture, but what it suggests is that majority of this population of these migratory golden eagles are carrying elevated levels of lead in their blood. 
and it looks from our samples that it doesn't take very many particles for lead levels to rise in the blood. This lead gets ingested, so it gets taken up into the bloodstream, bone minerals will absorb lead and as that bone tissue gets rebuilt the lead will get released back into the bloodstream and they will never go down to pre-exposure levels. Lead very toxic there's really no safe level of lead. A deer that got shot with a lead bullet uh, contains between 100 and 200 lead particles. We know lead fragments permeates meat up to two feet and we know that scavengers that are eating that are being poisoned. We know the gut piles are riddled in lead. Even one small fragment in the digestive system of the eagle can outright kill it. The metabolism for lead in eagles is fairly similar to humans. Effects of lead has been documented. Uh, low levels can impair motor skills, cognitive ability. In the case of an eagle, it could be the difference between an eagle being able to catch a jackrabbit and not. In higher doses of lead poisoning, we see renal failure or kidney failure. You'll see wing droop. At that stage, the birds are acutely poisoned. For golden eagles, what we're observing is a 30 to 50 percent decline in the number of observed migrants over the past 15 years. What can we do to offset that? Lead is fixable. If hunters make the switch to using non-lead alloys, we're going to take that threat out of the wild. Check out the Montana Experience YouTube channel, weekly stories from across Big Sky Country.